Hey guys, it's been a while since my last Warframe video I know. We're going to be bouncing back however with this Wukong rework and oh my god I think they've done a good job here. He's become one of my favourite frames overnight after being one of my least played. He does some insane amounts of damage but is no longer fully immortal. So we've got an Adaza crit kitty to give us some additional juicy red crits and with a newly added Cyanex pistol to gain some additional stat effects for a condition overload staff build. Let's have a look at what I've been working on. So let's spawn in some Corrupted Heavy Gunners at level 135. I'm not going to use the clone, I just want you to see the weapon synergies at the moment. The damage is still insane. Imagine this with a clone out as well. It's just incredible. We're going to use the Synex there to proc additional status effects and hit big ass damage. I mean in a second here we're going to be hitting for 3 million. Ouch! And for some additional filth, why not try a Sonar Banshee in your party along with an Octavia for some insane damage multipliers. We're 100 minutes plus into a mot survival here and just look at this insane damage. Boom! That is 151 million damage and definitely needs adult supervision. Crazy I know right? Well anyway, let's have a look at the Wukong build itself and see what I've been using. So in the aura slot we're going to be using steel charge for solo play and corrosive projection is preferred if you're going to be playing with a team quite a lot. Handspring is incredible for if you're getting knocked down you jump straight back up, super useful. Adaptation, Umbral Vitality, Gladiator Resolve and Gladiator Aegis are going to be our bread and butter tanky mods and the Gladiator mods are going to play a crucial part to synergize well with other mods and abilities. Prime Continuity to help with the Cloud Walker, Umbral Intensify for the Iron Staff. Prime Flow also to, well, just in general energy management, and Primal Rage, which is going to synergize well with the Gladiator mods as it helps stack crit chance up even higher. Super useful and really crucial for this build. We're going to be using Arcane Energize to help keep the Iron Staff going, and Arcane Guardian to synergize well with the Defy ability. Now guys, if you're worried about energy management and you don't have Arcane Energize, don't panic. There is another viable build you can deal with by taking off one of the Gladiator mods and sticking on a Hunter Adrenaline or Rage. These mods convert health loss into much needed energy and is very viable. You lose a bit of crit chance and I compensated for that on one of my builds by using a Arcane Avenger rank 3. But don't worry if you don't even have that because the crit kitty is going to give you some guaranteed red crits anyway with this build, so don't panic too much. So Wukong's second ability Cloud Walker has also been reworked, it used to be incredibly slow, now it's the absolute opposite. You can manoeuvre through those notorious laser traps and spy missions without setting any alarms off, I know a lot of people used to struggle with this. On top of that, you can crowd control enemies and open them up for finishes as you move through the mist, and if that wasn't enough, during the time that you're in the mist, you can actually rapidly heal yourself as well. Insane utility with this ability and I struggle to deal without it now. So moving on, we've got a lot to cover with the Iron Staff as we're going to be using a melee stat stick to bolster the damage of it. But first off, let's have a look at the Iron Staff itself. So we've got Prime Pressure Point for Core Damage, Prime Fever Strike and Shocking Touch for our Corrosive, Condition Overload which is going to be procking a hell of a lot with the rest of the build, Drifting Contact for combo duration, Berserker for attack speed, Organ Shatter to bolster the juicy red crits we're going to be creating with Prime Reach to extend the staff as much as we can. It's going to be insane amounts of damage, but we're going to need this melee stack stick to make it work. So it really doesn't matter what melee weapon you choose to use with this build, provided that you've got the three Gladiator mods on. So ignore the fact that this has a Riven on it, or the rest of the mods. Provided you have Gladiator Might, Gladiator Rush, and Gladiator Vice on there, you should be good to go. And if you're unfamiliar with the Gladiator mods, the set bonus actually gives you a 15% critical chance, which stacks with combo multiplier, and will increase the more Gladiator mods that you have on there. So I see a lot of people using the Helios and Deconstructor to apply the Gladiator mods. Now this is absolutely viable, but if you're not going to be using the melee weapon because you're too busy with the Iron Staff, why not use a Kavat to get some juicy red crits and take advantage of all those crit multipliers. So this Adaza Crit Kitty build will actually be completely utility based. It will also apply to a Smita should you wish to do some Kuva runs and get you know the double Kuva should you be lucky enough. 
So just in case your pet goes down, we've got Medipet Kit for Bleed Out Timer, Primed Animal Instinct to be able to see enemies on the map, Primed Pack Leader to be able to heal your pet, Tech Enhance which is going to increase the cat's eye duration, Sharpen Claws to remove enemy armor, Cat's Eye which is essential for this build, that's what's going to give you that crit buff, Link Health and Link Armor for tankiness, Hunter Recovery for a little bit more utility, and then Fetch which is essentially Vacuum for pets. It's awesome, I'm so glad they put this into the game. Thank you, DE. So with everything being said, I reckon your Iron Staff's pretty much good to go, but let's see if we can bolster the damage even more with some Condition Overload procs with this new Cyanex pistol from the Jovian Accord update. So don't expect crazy damage numbers from this Cyanex. What we're looking for with this weapon is to apply status effects to proc Condition Overload. So we've got Hornet Strike for core damage, with Lethal Torrent for fire rate and multi-shot. When taken off, this weapon seems to fire a little too slow for my liking. We've got all four dual stat mods to gain 100% status chance, and something I never thought I'd really say, but quick draw and stunning speed. This weapon just has a bit of downtime when it's reloading, and I'm only using this for status effects, and I want to be applying them as, as much as possible. So this just worked out for me. Like I said, don't expect this weapon to do crazy amounts of damage. So with that being said though, as you're applying status effects to enemies, don't forget you have your clone active and he could just delete enemies like, oh yep, he's already deleted them, never mind. So I'm hoping you get the build and the playstyle, and if you've got any questions, just ask down below in the comments section. If you've got your own builds, I'd love to see what you're working on, and what does everyone think of the rework as well? Are we all excited for Tenocon? I mean, it's just in a few days' time, and of course we've got Wukong Prime around the corner too. So if you're watching this in the future and you've just got Wukong Prime, I do hope that this really does help you. And if uh, you're a new player, it gives you something to work towards, as there is some endgame stuff in here. So guys, we are getting close to a thousand subscribers and I would really appreciate it if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet to do so as I'm really going to try and push partner. You guys are absolutely awesome. There are going to be some thank yous across the screen from people who have helped me out during the process of this video. You guys are also awesome and uh, let's just see if we can hit a thousand. That's my, my number one goal at the moment. Uh, I'm going to leave some gameplay of the rest of the build in action now for the rest of the video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Ciao for now.